As I'm speaking, we are so close to finishing off our 2023-2024 school year. Let me update you on how term three has been going. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Trisha at Juicebox Homeschool. We are just about wrapping up our school year with a third grader, sixth grader, and ninth grader. So it was kind of a big year with our first year in middle school for my son and first year of high school for my daughter. It was actually a big year for all of us, really, and there were a lot of changes, adjustments to make, and we learned a lot together. I have my notebook here with notes I jotted down for how term three went, some things I wanted to talk about. By the way, isn't this the cutest? This is the meetings notebook from Plum Paper that I recently got, and I've been using it at all my ministry meetings and work meetings, and I even use it for some content planning. I'm not an affiliate with them, but I do love their products. Look at how pretty this is. So I have my notebook here with all the notes from term three that I wanted to share with you. I have a cough drop in my mouth, so if you see me looking down, you hear this. This is how my day is going today. <laughs> So I can already feel myself wanting to talk about the year-end reviews of just how the whole year went, but I'm gonna try my best to stick to term three. One of the first things that was a change for me was starting a new ministry for young moms at our church with my really good friend. And that has been something that was on our hearts for a while, but really started to come into fruition during the summer of last year. And we heavily brainstormed and started planning monthly meetings for the young moms in our church. And our church has been growing so much in last few years. I don't know how it is at your church, but in the lobby, it's pretty overwhelming. After services, the lobby is incredibly crowded and there are a lot of new faces. It's so different. I've been at this church for over two decades before I got married and I used to work on staff there for seven years. So from going to feeling like you know everyone at this small church to not recognizing a single person in the lobby for a few minutes until you find one person you know is shocking to me. So part of the reason we wanted to start this ministry was because of that. When you're a new mom, it can be one of the loneliest stages of life and you could feel exhausted and unsupported and just uncertain of all the decisions that you have to make now. So ideally we wanted to help build community among the young moms and help them to find each other, have someone of the faith to encourage them and support them. And my friend and I both have kids who are out of that baby toddler stage, really out of it, and have older kids. It's been really enjoyable to try to put myself back in those days and think about what would have been helpful at that stage? If you are a mom now with kids five and under, I would love to hear feedback. What are some topics that you'd love to hear about? What are some struggles that you have or ways you need to be encouraged? And leave a comment down below. That would actually be really helpful to me in shaping next year's plans. So in addition to the Young Moms Ministry, I'm also continuing to participate in discipleship and that's a one-on-one -on -one meeting with women of our church and I really love it because one-on-one -on -one is where I feel the most comfortable, where I have the best conversations and really feel that it's a worthwhile investment of time. And I think that's the thing that I have to keep thinking about is how I use my time and how to steward that well. And that's always a challenge of uh, finding that balance, but I do feel like these two ministries are the most effective use of my time. Now let me share some of the things that we have finished already for term three and as I'm filming this it's early May just to give you an idea of where we are at. So we have finished our language arts completely. My third grader finished learning language arts through literature, the orange book. She finished Fix It Grammar, the Nose Tree Level 1. And she also finished IEW's Structure and Style 1A. My son used all the same except different levels. So he finished learning language arts through literature, the tan book. He finished Fix It Grammar Level 3 and he finished IEW Structure and Style Level 1A, 2A, 1. B, I think. That level thing, I can never remember. My ninth grader finished up her high school English course, which was through AP Homeschoolers, and that was a really challenging course. Very rigorous, a lot of writing, reading, analyzing and arguing different points in her writing. I really like the course. If you have a child who is strong in language arts and really enjoys reading and writing, a lot of writing, then this is a great course to expand their skills. The teachers are great. 
great at pushing them to be the best writers that they could be and not settle. And I really credit IEW for giving my daughter the confidence and the skills to be able to take any writing course without fear or worry that she won't be equipped to handle it. So that course has wrapped up. Another thing that we finished is math. My third and sixth grader finished their levels of Apologia Math. We use that as a supplement to Write Start Math and because Write Start Math is so teacher intensive, I always need something for math on the days that I'm not gonna be able to do it with each student. So that's kind of how we alternate. I may do like three days of Write Start and two days of Apologia, something like that, and just base it off on our schedule. So if it's a busy day or if we've come off a really busy weekend, then I might schedule Apologia because it's a lot less work for me. Both finished that, they both really enjoyed that. If I feel like they think of it as their fun math and Write Start is their serious math. And with Write Start, we just keep going. So I always have the next book available and I just keep going with those lessons when they're done. So with Write Start, we're never starting at the beginning of the book at a school year. We're always somewhere in the middle and that's been working out for us. My ninth grader recently finished her own math course. She took a geometry course with High School Math Live. That was a challenge. I forgot how hard geometry was. They ask parents to sign off on their quizzes and tests and I'm just kind of looking over it like I don't remember a thing. So I'm grateful for her teacher and that we were able to outsource that. I would say geometry was her most challenging course this year as far as needing to put in more effort in order to maintain her grade. All of her courses really required a lot of time and investment in not just attending the live class online, but also spending a lot of time outside of the course studying, reading, reviewing, writing reports, which I think I shared in my term one video how that was a change for us because we we're so used to just doing everything together that overall this year has been a great learning curve challenging but also I notice in term three how much smoother it's gone and how I think she has a handle on how to manage her workload and how to study properly for tests and how to prepare for what's ahead. First, I think starting off was hard. Where we are now, it's probably the best I could ask for and what I had hoped would happen is just we would get the hang of it. We would feel a lot more ease and peace over it. Yeah, so it's not just the subject matter, that's a big part of it, but it's also the habits and the life skills surrounding being an independent learner and managing your time. And lastly is science. Everyone finished their science course. My younger two, third and sixth grader finished apology chemistry and physics. We have been using Apologia Science for years, so that is a subject that really just rolls. We know what to do. My kids know how to write science reports, and we have been using Apologia Science for years. So when you use the same curriculum, it just helps you know what to do, your kids know what to do. It feels like a well-oiled machine, and we are just rolling through that. That was pretty easy to finish. We did science about two to three times per week, and my husband handled the science experiments every other Friday for the most part, and we were able to finish that one on time. My ninth grader took a biology honors course with Blue Tent Online. It's funny, that's a course that my daughter would stress out about and talk about the workload often, but she also really loved it. She was surprised about how much she loved science and studying it and writing about it. It was our first experience with dissections and that was interesting. We did those all outside. The whole family would gather because it was a whole, it was an event and we'd just be her audience. She did her little dissections and she would just scream and squeal throughout the whole thing. It was an experience. So she finished that course really well and we'll move on to chemistry next year. We also finished Yellow Spot Sun Drawing Americana, the drawing course, and that is really supposed to be um, a lot less weeks. I forgot, 18 weeks? Something shorter than what how we use it, but we really only use it once a week, and that has worked out really great for us over all these years, pacing ourselves, and we'll finish the course in a year. So we finished Drawing Americana, and my kids have moved on to Trailblazing Transit. Okay, now on to some things that we did not finish yet, but we will finish by the end of May. The first one is The Knotgrass Exploring World History. So this is the first book and behind it that's the second book and if you could see her bookmark where are we here so we will finish this before the new school year we'll just keep on going I'm hoping to finish by the end of May but if not we will just go through June and finish it off I'm thinking I'll do a review of this curriculum because there's so much to it and a lot of extra things that I don't hear people talk about I don't know if they know about it and it's been great and I'm planning to use a version of not grass history for my younger two next year which I have shared an unboxing of okay staying with my high schooler we also are very close to finishing off. There's the bookmark right there. So we're very close to finishing this off. Just a few more lessons, maybe two more weeks, and 
then we should be done with this first book. There are four books, I believe, in the whole series. We're doing one book per year, and I think we're only gonna do the first two books. So we'll use the blue book next year. It's designed for two books in one year, but it's a lot, and this is not something that we're reading every day. This is something we're doing twice a week only, which for us is the perfect amount. And I know I've shared that I have read aloud time with my teenager. This is how we'll split it up. So it'll be two days a week of apologetics and three days a week of reading a chapter together. But this has a lot of great information. It helps with critical thinking. So I highly recommend it, but I personally prefer to just take it slower. There's just so much to unpack and think about and discuss that it has been really great to go slow with this one. Also for my ninth grader, she finished her first course of ASL. Oh, this is another thing that is done. And she took it as a dual enrollment course with the community college. That course was all online. She had group projects where she had to meet with a group and have conversations with the small group online, record it, and that would be a project. So ASL 1 is complete, which I'm so grateful for, and she is going to continue to the next course this summer with the hopes of taking the third one in the fall. Term 3 is also busier than normal because it's dance competition season. How many dance moms are out there? All of my kids Kids love dancing and they're on a competitive dance team. So this springtime of year feels busier because uh, some of the weekends are dance competition weekends. So in the spring, I've learned to plan lighter Mondays on the weeks where we have a dance competition that weekend because Monday we wake up and everyone is just exhausted and there's extra laundry, there's costumes we need to reorganize and put back nicely. Everyone is just physically spent. So planning a lighter Monday has been been a blessing and a gift for all of us. I just take out anything that is very taxing on us, the extra things, and try to keep it light and enjoyable for us that day. It's a gift I like to give to myself and my family. And it's not every Monday in the spring. It's really one or two times per month that we need that extra just ease back into regular life. And lastly, let me share some things that we will not finish by the end of the school year and we're going to trickle into summer with it. So the pairing of spelling and handwriting. I've alternated those each day. That's one of the things that will go if we want to plan a lighter day. I'll take off spelling and handwriting. So we do have more to do. So we'll just continue that on throughout the summer. Those are easy for my kids to do. They enjoy it and it's fun and not something that stresses them out. That's from a reason for. Another thing that will continue on through the summer is Generations Taking Asia for Jesus. That one we started somewhere in the winter. So I didn't plan on finishing that by the end of the school year. It's something that we just wanted to start. It just looks so good and it is good. I do have a video filmed of what we are planning to use this summer, which includes some of this, but also some other things that we're planning to do to keep up our skills. It's gonna be a light homeschool summer, but we're still gonna keep going with some things to keep our skills up and keep the learning going. But I definitely like for my kids to have a lighter summer school schedule just so they build anticipation for the new school year. And that helps a lot for me too, as a homeschool mom, just to have time to plan well and also to build up my own own motivation and anticipation for the new school year. So that's pretty much all I can think of to share about how term three went. If you have any questions about anything I shared or resources, let me know below in a comment and I'll try to get back to you. I think it's been a great year and not that it's been a smooth year by any means. Good in a sense that we have learned from mistakes, that we have persevered through some trials and I'm grateful to be able to share it here. I think in a couple months, it'll be like my one year mark sharing on YouTube. And that's something I wanted to do for for a while because of questions I receive and it was hard for me to type out answers that were thorough and to the way that I wanted to communicate it. So it has been a blessing to be here and share our homeschool journey with you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.